Sifu on the Steam Deck OLED. So this game was given away for free on the Epic Games Store a few days ago at the time of making this video. It's verified on Steam Deck. It's been like that for a while. I also have a test on the Steam Deck LCD. But if you have the Epic Store version, what's the difference between this one and the Epic version? Well, this one has pre-compiled shaders from Valve that download automatically like other SteamOS games. We're going to expand about that in a moment, but let's get into the game right away. All right, so getting started in the options menu, 800p, basically high settings with ultra textures. And if you're like me and don't like film grain, make sure to put post process on medium. Here's a quick comparison. Personally, I think that film grain doesn't add anything to this game. All the opposite, I think it detracts from the experience, but that's just me. So I deleted all the shaders that I had compiled on this Steam Deck for this game. So this is how it should run the first time you launch it. But on the Steam version, in comparison to the Epic Store version, in some parts of the level you get a stutter of the game doing some shader compilation, it seems, or traversal stutter. I'm not entirely sure which of them is it. But if you look at my previous video on the Epic Games Store version on the Steam Deck LCD, there was a lot of traversal stutter. And here it seems to be way better. It's not completely gone, don't get me wrong, but it's the game stops for less time than on the other version. I think that's very important when it comes to having a good experience. But the good part about this is that, yeah, here, as you can see, you cannot escape from it, even on the Steam version. When you're traversing in between the same level, like here, the game is loading something very quickly. Although, again, I think on the Epic Games Store version is a little bit more annoying. So probably those pre-compiled shaders that Steam downloads when you download this game on Steam help in this case. On the, this is an OLED Steam Deck, so you should be able to do 90 FPS, but I'm going to focus on 60 at the moment. It's basically high settings with ultra textures, and as you can see, we are pretty good to go. This is not the only level, but yeah, there we go, another stutter. So, as you can see, it's as soon as we traverse in between sections of the level. It's basically inescapable, even on the Steam version, so... Well, it's a bit better. It doesn't fix it 100%, which completely sucks in my opinion, but hey, what can you do? But this should give you over two and a half hours of battery. You can improve this time at 60 frames by using the following configuration. So like this, I think the game looks great. It has good shadows, good ambient light, a good amount of draw distance and all that important thing. But it's two and a half to three hours, better said, on the OLED. And if you want more battery out of this one while retaining visuals a little bit, instead of using high settings, like I'm using right now, again, this is an F460 with good visuals, you can lower that foliage, that post-process, post-process on low should be good, effects to low as well, view distance you can keep it on medium, and shadows on medium. This will affect the resolution of the shadows, and if you put it like this, lock to 60, you have at least another 40 minutes of battery easily. So the game does look a bit worse, less dark when it comes to shader areas, but at 60 frames like this, you have more battery life, which I think is important. So let's move a little further with the battery life option. But as you can see on the OLED, is with these settings, it's easily three hours. Three and a half hours on a full charge, I would say. If you underbolt your OLED Steam Deck, maybe even four. But that's all up to you. And I think this is a fantastic game. Especially now that has an easier mode for people that are just starting. It's not as punishing at the beginning if you don't want to. But uh, like this, I think it's good enough. The game looks awesome, uses the entire screen, thankfully. Doesn't use the entire GPU. It's just that the traversal stutter is super annoying. Even again, if you buy it on Steam, I mean, yeah, it's a little bit better, but the stutter still happens. Which completely sucks, in my opinion. 
That's the biggest issue in a real Engine 4 games. Alright, so the 90 FPS configuration, quote unquote, were very on the edge of 90s over here. 1152 by 720. Make sure you scroll to the bottom of the advanced menu and choose FSR with zero sharpness. More sharpness than zero in this case, I think, is too much. Medium shadows, because low are super pixelated, you can see squares on the shadows. Ultra textures is fine. It doesn't use a lot of VRAM. Beauty distance you can do medium or low, FX on low, post process on low, foliage on low, and anti-aliasing on high. On medium, there's a lot of aliasing. On high, the performance hit is small, but the edges are way more defined. And again, with the system level FSR, you still get a great image, a little bit over sharpened, but it really helps the art style of the game. This kind of, how to say it? Kind of comic booky ish look. So I think it really does help. The game does have like edges to it when it comes to characters and the graphics. Yeah, it's like similar to Borderlands, but not as aggressive when it comes to the cartoony nature of it. Again, the stutter will be there no matter what. Although, luckily, it's more of a traversal stutter issue, I'd say. And in here we're a little bit more CPU limited, especially when looking into the distance. So you're more into the 80s and the 90s in the demanding parts, but it feels smoother. Personally, I don't mind playing at 60, I think considering the battery life difference, instead of 3.5 to 4 hours, you get 2 hours, maybe 2 hours and 30 minutes. Um, it's an option. Although when foliage shows up, that's kind of the problem. <laughs> that it drops below 90, so... Yeah. Dropping below 90 happens. Not all the time. But it can happen in moments like this with foliage close to the camera. Which is not the norm. It's more of a thing of this level. But it can happen. We're now in the club level. Basically the second level of the game. I'm going to speed run through it, don't worry. And again, we're basically on low settings with medium shadows. <laughs> it looks pretty damn good in my opinion. Again, here we're sacrificing the visuals to get a higher frame rate, close to the refresh rate of the screen. If you have an LCD Steam Deck, just target 60s and have fun. And this, as I said before this part, it's a more close-up environment, so it's less demanding. But at the same time, yeah. you can see that there's no foliage like in the part I just showed you. The so performance can vary from level to level. That's why I usually try to show multiple of them. Especially if I find one that is extra demanding. Hit everyone. And again, artistically, I think this game looks amazing. Considering, again, we're not on the highest settings, nowhere close. And you can sacrifice the visuals a little bit to get better results. Still, again, not perfect 90s. It all depends on which area of the game you are. But usually, we stay there pretty well. Again, this is for more for people that want 90 FPS, which is not the norm. Wanting 90s on Steam Deck is nice to have. But on the smaller screen, personally, Playing at 60 for me is more than enough. I play a lot of games at 40 because many of them cannot reach 60s. But this is one of those that can be tweaked to your heart's content when it comes to frame rates. It's also on the Nintendo Switch, so it kind of makes sense. On the Switch though, it looks horrible in comparison, obviously. But they managed to get it working there, so that should explain it. Let's fight! Oof. Wrong button, wrong button, wrong button. Anyway, let's go into the next one. I'm trying not to spoil anything, that's why I haven't showed bosses or any of that. But one thing I need to spoil about the first boss is that it drops frames more often than other locations because there's a lot of foliage in that part. So keep that in mind. But in general, the game performs pretty damn well. It's, what just bothers me is the stutters that happen when you traverse. 
which again is not like other UE4 games that it stutters every time you do a new thing. It still feels like it could have been so much better in that regard. Okay, fine, I changed my mind. I'm showing you a little bit of one of these boss fights that has the formal terrain. I think it looks pretty cool. I forgot this was a thing in this game. But as you can see, visually is very coherent. And you can get pretty good performance if you really want to, which is good to have. Having options is the soul of PC gaming. And well, this one seems to be the best running out of all of them that I showed you at the moment. So, uh, yep. Not much else to say. Sifu runs great on Steam Deck. Ooh, he got me in the face. What the hell? It's a tough game. You can play it on an easier difficulty, like I'm doing right now. You'll be basically be kicking ass a little bit easier than on the normal game. That's optional, of course. You can play it however you want. It's not a problem. You can play between 60 and 90. It all depends on how much battery power you want to use. In this case, if you lock it to 60 and use kind of like medium settings, you should be good to go. Basically, three and a half to four hours of battery. Then if you want to play at 90s, you can lower the resolution. And using the SteamOS FSR solution, you should be good to go. You can do 90s or you can increase the graphics to high, lock it to 60 at native res. And you have less battery life, maybe two and a half to three hours. But you get better visuals. And by better visuals is higher resolution shadows, maybe a few extra reflections, a little bit less pop in. But the traversal stutter is still there. But that's something to keep in mind. It's less egregious than on the Epic Games Store version, but it's still there, whether we like it or not. Oof. So would I recommend this game on Steam Deck? Yep, even if you have the Epic Game Store version that was given away for free or you bought it on the Epic Game Store, I think you can still get a great experience on this one. Just expect a bit more stutter on the Epic version, as I said, but nothing that makes the game unplayable. I mean, it's mostly traversal related, it seems, but it doesn't make it unplayable like Jedi Survivor, as an example. And you can play even at either at 60 or 90 with decent battery life if you want to. The settings actually do make a difference. So yeah, you can get your ass kicked on the go if you want to. And if you grabbed it for free when it was free on December on the Epic Games Store, well, you should be having a good experience using the Heroic Games Launcher or the or the Junk Store. Any of those two really works. Just make sure to set up the cloud saves, because sometimes it doesn't save them in those third-party launchers on the Steam Deck. But without further ado, it's a great experience, you should play it, at least in my opinion. It's a fantastic game, it will kick your ass if you play on normal, even if you play on easy. But it's worth experiencing in my opinion, and visually it's very balanced as well. They did a great job. So anyway, that's it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see ya next time. Bye guys.